Well, hey, everybody, it's 3 p.m. and it is time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. So happy to have you joining us. We'll wait just a few minutes for everybody to find us and start piling in. I love when everybody comes aboard. Today we're going to be talking about Swiss chard. Look about look at this beautiful Swiss chard. I just cut this. Hello, Tani. How are you? Thank you for being here. Um, talking about Swiss chard today. We're going to be sauteing this up, but look at how beautiful. Look at this is the red and this is the yellow. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I just pulled this out of my garden about 15, 20 minutes ago. Here's the thing. The very first time that I made this, I came walking into my husband. and I'd never actually cooked Swiss chard before. And I said, oh, my God, look at this beautiful Swiss chard. Look how much there is. And we were so excited. And I brought it in. And I heated up some oil in a pan and I sauteed it. And the next thing you know, when I was done, I had about that much. I mean, maybe even one handful. All of that sauteed down to just one handful. And I thought, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? What do I need to do? Hey there, Cynthia. And I started like researching and experimenting, I think is a better word about what to do. And I just want to stop a minute and say hi to Teresa. Because Teresa, just yesterday as I was reaching up and hitting the word finish, Teresa typed yes, which meant that she wanted me to continue to show you how to make the salmon. But there's such a delay in Facebook, I couldn't tell. So Teresa, I'm so sorry. I saw it just, I was in momentum and I couldn't stop myself. So sorry about that. Just wanted to tell you, I did see it though. And thank you. Anyway, back to the chard. Um, the chard is like spinach. It will saute down so quickly and you really have to keep an eye on it. So I have a hack for that. And I'm going to share it with you right now. So first we're going to start. I'm going to, to start with the stems. Now, the stems can be really bitter, but look how beautiful they are. Those are the stems of the chard. I've already cut them off. And I'm going to chop them in very small pieces. And I'm going to saute them only in butter to start with. So here is a tablespoon or two. I've got a cast iron pot that I'm working on right here. There we go. Hello there, Saeed. Nice to see you again. Um, and here we go. I'm gonna turn that up. We're gonna start um, melting the butter. How many of you have cooked chard before? Let me just see, like raise your hand if you've um, cooked chard and actually put a one or something other than an emoji because what happens is I don't see who is typing the emojis. And I have a couple questions for you if you actually cook chard and you're successful at it. So the, the edges of the chard can be really, really bitter and that's what you have to be very careful of. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice them in really tiny pieces or chop them I guess is a better word, right? And just very tiny like this, just almost like chopping um, celery. They sound like celery too as you chop them. I guess nobody's cooked chard and you can smell it. They have a very raw smell to them. So that's why you've really got to cook them. And the way to do that is by putting them in first. And the very first time I made this, I made the mistake of putting them in at the same time that I put the chard in. And the fact is, is that the chard needs to cook far long, uh, not the, the chard, the stems need to cook far longer than the chard itself. So we're going to start with the, set, the stems. And we're going to put this in, into the butter. Give it a wish around. And I'm only using butter to start with because the butter really has a flavor giver to it more than just the olive oil. And we really need to flavor this. Um, never eaten or cooked chard. Well, maybe you will because I'm gonna show you a hack that makes it beautiful and makes it very delectable. So um, there you go. I love it in my garden. Sometimes I hate to, uh, to cut it out because it's just sitting there just so beautiful. I love the colors and I wait until it gets so big and then I say, oh my gosh, I have to cut this chard. So 
Okay, we are going to let that cook down. There we go. Can you see that? Look how beautiful those colors are. I just love that. Okay. So this is on a very a medium low or uh, yeah, medium low fire. And we're just gonna let this cook a bit. And I'm gonna add some salt to it now because the salt will sweat, if you will. <laughs> I love it when they, the chefs say that. We need to sweat the onions. But in this case, I think we need to sweat the charred stem so that they soften and that they give us a really, really much sweeter flavor. Get the acid out with the salt and with the butter. So there you go. And you can really smell the, there's really, I can't explain the smell of it, but there's a very raw smell to it. And, um, and it's almost like a, a dirty, like almost like dirt. So I see it coming out in that rawness is starting to leave. Okay, so this is good. So I have some scallions. These are left over from yesterday. And um, I know that, that they're clean because I had a little piece of paper towel in the bag already. And I'm gonna take these. That's my trick to myself so that I know I've already cleaned something when I put it back in the same vegetable bag that I found it in. And we're just gonna saute uh, these along with the stems of the chard. Right there. So I think I told all of you, those of you that are watching, that I found my apron and uh, my housekeeper in Laguna sent it to me and it arrived today. So here is my old apron back in my good old hands. I'm so excited to have it back. I definitely did not want to lose it and I definitely missed it. But I'm enjoying this new one that was um, not sauteed but embroidered by my dear friend, Tawny, um, not Tawny, but Tanya, Tanya Murray, with her embroidery machine, which just cracks me up to see somebody in today's day and age with an embroidery machine from home, which I love, which tells me that a lot of the old things that used to be very exciting and entertaining and great hobbies for people are starting to come back. Um, so I love that. And she was nice enough to keep me from having to go to the Boulevard Mall, which nobody wants to do if they don't have to. Um, and she embroidered it for me. So, okay. So if you can see that and the raw, that really raw smell is starting to get out of it. And that is a good sign. It's starting to soften. Now, the one thing that I'm going to do with all of this is I'm going to put a splash. Now this is a finishing oil, this fresh blood orange, if you can see it, fresh blood orange olive oil. The thing about it is, this is usually this is a finishing oil, but I really want to put it in so that these stems absorb some of the flavor of the fresh blood orange, which will sweeten the bitterness of the stems. Uh-oh, Biggie has just shown up. He's either going to bark or beg to go outside. So stand by, Tom Letizia. You may have to take him out. That dog shows up every day at 3 o'clock as though I was um, cooking for him. Okay, Tom, he's at the door begging, so you better run on down. <laughs> oh, he's going away. All right. The apron was in the very corner of the dresser. There's two big orange candle holders. And somehow the apron fell back behind the big candle holders. And the top of the dresser has black granite on it. And so since the apron was black you and it was turned over, it wasn't on the hot pink side. It was turned over because she sent me a picture of it and said, would you believe what I just found? Um, and, uh, so it was like this, so you could barely see it back there and only because she was dusting did we find it. So that is where it was. It was too, too much, too funny. Okay. So now let me give a smell of all that. Okay. So, well, Hey there, Sue Platner. Good to have you. Thanks for being here. So now here's the hack. We are going to put in rice cauliflower. So we're going to put in this rice cauliflower. 
because what happens is when you're working with spinach or when you're working with kale, when you're working with chard, as you start to saute down the chard or the spinach or the kale, it just melts away. But if you utilize something that has substance in it that keeps it from only feeling the heat, it will just hold its weight. So if you can see, the stems and the onions are sort of going, it looks like confetti. Isn't that so beautiful? Isn't that gorgeous? Let me give you a better shot. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It just looks like confetti. And it's going to get even better because we are going to saute up at this uh, rainbow chart. So first, let's cut it up. Let me move over here. Okay. Here we go. So be sure right now, I don't know if you see this, at the, but at the bottom of your screen, it says... Get all live notifications. And if you click that button at the bottom of the screen, then every time I go live, you'll get a notification. And something tells me that all of you have already done that. That's how come you show up every day. Um, but just in case there's someone new watching, we want them to for sure get a notification. They can join us every day because we're having a party. On uh, Tomorrow, we're going to be on Channel 8. So we had to switch our Channel 8 day from Friday to Wednesday because of Final Four. Final Four is preempting the regular lifestyle show. And so as a result, I'm gonna be on tomorrow at three o'clock and I will give you guys a sneak peek of that for sure. And um, that way you can watch the show live from the side camera when I do it. So that's what I'm doing on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, I have um, Sandy Zager who is gonna be on the show. She's a party planner from New York. And let me tell you something, if you don't think she's had to pivot during COVID, I mean, honestly, what happened to party planners in the year of 2020? And what did she have to do in order to pivot her business and still make a living for her and her children? So that's gonna be an amazing story. And we may have some amazing surprises for that. I'm waiting to find out if she's got a surprise joining us. So, okay, the way that I'm cutting this is the same way that I cut um, the basil or um, what did I cut yesterday? Ah, I forgot. The collard greens. Oh, my God, those collard greens were so good last night. Can I tell you? They were amazing. Okay, I'm going to chop up and mince this garlic right now and throw it in before, because it looks like it's just about time, before I throw in all the rainbow chard. And this is gonna be ready in just a few minutes. It will not take long at all. Once I put that chard in, it goes very, 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 very fast. So, and I do need to put it in all at once. I don't wanna put this in and then later keep cutting and then put that in because it'll, it'll be too late. Okay, let me give this a stir because it sounds like it might be Smells like it could be burning. Okay. Which a little bit of uh, caramelization on this is not bad. Okay, there we go. All right, in with the in with the garlic. Here we go. Go. Always use mis minced garlic. Never just crushed garlic because nobody wants a big bite of garlic. That's for sure. Okay. Go. and make like a well for the Swiss chard. Okay, there we go. Let's finish cutting all of this. And this is gonna be ready in just a few minutes. So this is great. Tonight we're having ahi tuna. And believe me, I was thinking that I was gonna make the ahi tuna for all of you, and I wish that I could. I'll, I'll bring it out and tell you how I'm doing it, but I won't make it because my husband doesn't want to eat dinner at 3.30 in the afternoon, and there's no way that ahi tuna is going to keep. But if you want me just to walk you through it, I'll show you what I do. I'll bring it out. You can't blame him for that, right? Okay, there we go. And let's get the rest of this. And pull it out. Okay, there we go. 
So rolling it like a cigar, chopping it in like quarter inch to half inch pieces. Let's roll this up, just squish it all right in there. Can you see that? Let me tip you down. Okay, yes please, Teresa, I saw it today. Just missed it by half a second yesterday and I was in momentum and just as I hit finish, the yes popped up, so okay. Got you covered today, Teresa. Okay, there we go, so it's all sauteed. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of olive oil Put it into the pot. This is regular olive oil now. So usually I start with olive oil and butter, but in this case, I just started with the butter because I really needed to flavor um, the stems of the Swiss chard. So there we go. Okay, now, oh, and it's starting to caramelize, which is really good. Even the cauliflower is caramelizing, which is amazing. And so I'm going to make a well right now in the middle here. And I'm just going to take this Swiss chard and I'm going to dump it right in. Now, that looks like a lot of Swiss chard. Believe you me, I get that. And I probably should have used the other uh, pan that I always use for all of you. But you will watch and you will see. That as this starts to steam from the heat, it is just going to, I mean, you just won't believe how quickly and how little there is left. But the fact that we have it in with the cauliflower keeps it from wilting 100%. It just keeps it very, um, I can't explain it, it keeps it bare, it keeps it from, there we go. There we go. And it doesn't take long. So, gotta keep stirring it, keep bringing the cauliflower up to the top. I, think I have, let me get some tongs. There it goes. So, once this gets covered, there we go. you can see it's starting to wilt. So, let me grab these tongs. And let's get the cauliflower on top. There we go. And it's going. And there is a sweet spot to taking this off the fire or turning the fire off, as you can see. There we go. Now, if I had put this in without the cauliflower, it would be gone already. But the cauliflower provides a buffer with the heat. Okay, that's it. I am going to take this and move it right off the heat. There we go. And there we go. And that's it. Isn't that amazing? How much that cooked down and how beautiful it is. We're just going to toss it around. And it looks just beautiful. So I am going to finish this with a little more orange, blood orange olive oil to give it extra flavor. Because chard is kind of like spinach. It really doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. But it is really healthy for you. It's a definitely, it's a beautiful green um, leafy vegetable that uh, Roseanne's husband can't eat, apparently, <laughs> any more than collard greens, but look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And there you go. Okay, so let me take this. Let's see how hot this is. I think I can move this to the other side of the stove here. And let me grab the ahi tuna. So here are three beautiful sushi-grade ahi tuna steaks and what I'm going to do and I can actually season these with all of you and I and that's what I'll do so here's the um, uh, so let's see Bill Smallwood is here hey Bill Smallwood and I guess that's all that's join us for the last couple minutes all right so the first thing we're going to do with these is we are going to 
sprinkle a little bit of olive, um, not olive oil, but um, lemon juice onto this. There we go, just a little bit of lemon juice. Lemon juice helps with the flavor, and it also helps to be an adherent for the seasoning. So, there we go. Okay, now, so anybody that is watching, if you would share, if there's anybody out there that you think would love this information or love this recipe, or would love to join us every day at three o'clock, so many people are home, so many people are not working, so many people are home, working at home and need a break, and you think that spending time with us every day would be something that they would enjoy, then by all means, share it on their page or share it on your page and tag them. We have a great community here of really loving and wonderful people who pop in every day, and we do have a good time. We have made some great uh, drink recipes together. We've made some some good recipes. We've listened to people tell their story about COVID and reinventing themselves. So we have definitely had an amazing time here. So definitely, by all means, share right now, if you can, on your own pages. And uh, that helps us get more followers, which means that we will get in front of more people and more people will be joining our happy party. Okay, so I put a little bit of salt and pepper on this and then I'm gonna take this Montreal steak seasoning. Yep, steak seasoning, that's what it is. And I am going to literally cover this. Oh, if I can get it open, there we go. I am going to completely cover the top. Now what's really great about this, it's got crushed, red pepper in this, crushed black pepper, sesame seeds. Can you see how amazingly, and what's really great is this becomes a crust on the ahi tuna and it, and it is fantastic. So we eat our ahi tuna very rare, just seared on, the, on this side. And then when I turn it over in the pan, I will squeeze lemon juice and probably a little bit of uh, coconut aminos or better known as soy sauce, it's just that I use the coconut aminos instead of soy because soy to me is not a healthy item. And I'll sprinkle that as it's, as it's cooking on this side. And then I will put this on that side as a crust. And I will serve this with Dijon mustard on the side which is really great. You cut this, you dip it in the Dijon mustard. Um, maybe if I have a little bit of wine, I'll mix it into the Dijon mustard and some sliced avocados on the side. The, the remaining avocados from my time at uh, Rossi Ranch Avocados. And that's it. That's our dinner tonight. I'm going to stick this back in the refrigerator. I will reheat that just before we sit down. So um, this dinner right here will take very little time because the ahi tuna cooks in five minutes or less, just depending how quickly that fire is. And um, the charred, Swiss chard, went very quickly. Let's see what time it is, about 15 minutes. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you cook some of these recipes. If you do, tag a picture. Hey there, Susan Thomas, nice to see you. You can also put a picture and gather with Danny Bubby. We're always there, always watching what you post and what you've made. And I love having you here. Again, if there's anybody that you think would enjoy joining us every day, please do um, share this on their page or tag them and invite them to join us uh, down below in the chat. And that's it. So on the count of three, one, two, three, go out and spread love like butter. See you tomorrow, everybody.